I run a relatively modern Linux desktop system with an AMD 6700 XT and a Ryzen 3600X. It's by no means the newest hardware possible, but it's well within the support range of Windows. However, Linux is well known for its wide range of hardware support, including legacy hardware. This can mean still mostly usable systems like a ThinkPad X220, going back further to some of the early Pentiums, or moving outside of the x86 space and looking at different architectures, and all manner of other devices, many of which nobody in their right mind should be using. But here's the problem. Whilst a lot of these devices have official or semi-official support, many others don't. And sometimes that support can take a little while. And by a little while, what I mean is approximately 10 or so years. So this right here, I don't know what side I put it on actually, one of these sides, this is an Acer Iconia B1750. And as of kernel 6.4, it is going to have a touchscreen driver in Linux. This is a wildly powerful device that everybody should want to be using, rocking the incredible Intel Atom Z3735G. This has a massive base clock of 1.33 GHz and a boost clock of 1.83, with four, which is actually kind of surprising, Four cores, this is part of the Bay Trail line, with a massive, more than you could ever need, one whole gigabyte of RAM to work with. I don't know why you'd ever need any more than that. And a massive seven inch screen with a whole nother inch of bezel to grab onto. This is truly a device that everybody should want to be running. Now, for any of you out there who struggle with humor with comedy that was a joke but there is a reason why we're talking about this so this driver was made i'm pretty sure i've mentioned him plenty of times on this channel by hans de Goad, an employee of red hat if i've not mentioned him if you go through the linux kernel mailing list you'll see his name pop up relatively often he does a lot of really great work and sometimes brings in drivers like this even if he didn't have a red hat email if you just guess that random contributors are from Red Hat, a lot of the time you're just going to be right. Red Hat employees do a lot of work in the kernel. Now, considering how many years it took for somebody to get around to making this driver, you might think it's some substantial project. It's like 10,000 lines long. It's really difficult to actually get done. In reality, though, it's just that nobody got around to making it. It's only 301 lines of driver code, with an extra 17 for the maintainers file, the kconfig, and the make file. It's really a relatively small project. Now, I don't understand the driver code myself, but 300 lines is really not that much. But here's the fun thing about writing a third-party driver without any support from the original manufacturer. Sometimes you don't have all the information you need. Input. Add a new Novatech NVT TS driver. Add a new driver for the Novatech I2C touchscreen controller as found on the Acer Iconia 17B1750 tablet. This is an incredible product name, and I love the way that big companies name things. Unfortunately, the touchscreen controller model number is unknown. Even with the tablet opened, it is impossible to read the model number. Android calls this a NVT-TS touchscreen, but that may apply to other Novatech controller models too. This appears to be the same controller as the one supported by this link over here, but unfortunately, that does not give us a model number either. If you want to go and check out this driver code, go ahead and do so. As I said, I don't understand the code myself. Without direct support from Acer or Novatech, good luck finding information on some random 10 year old tablet and touchscreen controller. Maybe some engineer out there who worked on it happens to have some information and knows where the information can be found, but 
otherwise it'll probably never be found and the driver just sits here working with this but nobody's really sure if it's like the same as other controllers or what the deal is here it's just like well it seems like it does the job here i don't know if it's gonna work anywhere else though now, the big problem with better supporting Linux on devices that aren't just like a regular desktop system or a laptop is getting Linux onto the device to actually use the drivers. Now, unlike many of the modern tablets out there, the Acer Iconia isn't really locked down. It does have a locked bootloader, but for the most part, it's a regular old x86 system. It's just a regular old x86 system in the form of an Android tablet. And unlocking the bootloader on devices like this is pretty straightforward. Many devices, you don't even need to do anything special. They just support the OEM unlock feature and you can just disable the boot lock. On other devices, there are some little things you need to do, but it's pretty well documented at this point. But just unlocking the bootloader isn't everything you need to do, and this is one of the very rare times where the Pharonix comments are actually useful. Someone pinged Hans de Goad and asked him if there was anything else that needed to be done to get Linux running on this device. So he showed up and just posted a tutorial on how to get it working. So if you happen to have an Acer Iconia and you want to run Linux on it, I guess it's not really useful for much else. So you can take it from being a paperweight into being a, to being a slightly more useful paperweight that is now running Linux. Do keep in mind, this is just a touchscreen driver, so it's very likely some of the other things in the system are not properly supported. There is Wi-Fi support, so at a bare minimum, you can touch the screen and you can use Wi-Fi. So it's usable, albeit it's an Atom 3735G, is that what I said? Whatever it was, a really old CPU, so it's not going to be a good experience but you can run Fedora on it, and that is really cool. I don't think you should do that, but the option is there. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this is a lot of the time we talk about, you know, really modern changes. Like, hey, this is the new graphics pipeline. This is this crazy kernel change. This is that that's going to affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. And all of that stuff is really cool. And those developers are doing a lot of really good work. But that's not the only work going into the kernel. I think it's also important to highlight the work being done in the background for things that, you know, most people aren't going to care about. Obviously, there's things like the Apple M1 and M2 project to get Linux running on the Apple Silicon. Not everyone's going to use that, but there's going to be a tiny group of people that really care. And the same with this. Most people are not going to be running Linux on an Acer Iconia but there may come some weird situation where you actually want to do so. Maybe you want to use it as part of like a monitoring system for, I don't know, a weather system you deployed yourself or other random weird things like this. And it's always a good idea to make this support better and make this support possible. So I just want to say all of these devs that are doing things that nobody really cares about, all of you people are absolutely incredible. Most of you are not going to get any recognition for doing that work, but you're still going ahead and doing so anyway. And that is awesome. And sure, maybe it would be a better idea to focus on things that more people are actually going to care about. And that's a valid argument. Focus on critical bugs, massive new feature changes, and things like that. But that's just not the way that FOSS works. This is a project run by a ton of individual developers working on the things that they want to work on. In some cases, they are paid to do certain things, but it's still the idea there's no overarching leadership of the entire project. Some people are going to work on those massive features that everybody cares about, but other people are going to work on these little things that are very, very niche that maybe only a handful of people need, or maybe only they need at this moment. But even so, it's still incredibly important work. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Maybe you think there should be some overarching leadership directing where everything should go. 
I have not heard a good argument for it, but maybe there should be. Or maybe you are one of these people that work on these random drivers that nobody else needs, and you got some insight on why you do so. I would love to hear it. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrub, Sally Berape, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... I should try to cuss. And. 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 I actually don't have an outro.